On the 7th of June, uh, U.S. Secretary of State uh, Tony Blinken announced uh, to the world that uh, they were, the United States was going to take measures uh, restricting, uh, imposing visa restrictions on uh, those undermining the peaceful resolution of the crisis rocking uh, Cameroon, especially uh, the southwest and northwest uh, region. And we have uh, this evening decided to look at uh, this uh, decision by the United States of America, especially the new uh, government of uh, this uh, nation, vis a vis the crisis in Cameroon. Uh, we are going to be discussing this with our panelists who are in the house today. Uh, we are in, already in the company of our consultant, uh, Apostle Rambi Valentine Gua, who is seated in the house with us. Good evening, welcome. Good evening, Leo. Good evening, Cameroonians. Good evening, our viewers of Prime Hour. It's a joy to be here today again. At least we are getting positive news from the United States of America. And we believe by the grace of God this crisis will soon come to an end. Okay. Uh, also sitting in for Andre Atemibako, who just announced this evening that he was not going to be uh, here with us for reasons beyond his control. We have Tamai Chavis. Uh, good evening and welcome. Good evening, you. Good evening to the President of the Republic. Good evening, Baba Jiro. Good evening to the Minister of Public Works. And of course, good evening to those in the Northern Southwest region. We are expecting Far uh, Tayong Elvis, uh, who just indicated that he's caught in traffic. He's going to be joining us uh, shortly, as well as uh, Senior Barista Ashwe Manuel. They are on their way coming. Um, I'll start with you, Apostle Ambi Valentine Gua. Your first uh, reaction to this outing uh, by U.S. Uh, Secretary of State um, Tony J. Blinken? Well, uh, it's encouraging, at least, concern has been shown to the Anglophone crisis in Cameroon, contrary to the report of the Norwegian Refugee uh, Department that said it was the most neglected crisis worldwide. I think with the interest of the United States focusing their attention until the uh, Secretary General tweeted saying that uh, they are interested in bringing peace and to bring those who are promoting violence in Cameroon to book and also restricting them visas from entering the United States. I think uh, that is a very clear strike. It's a very, very good step taken so far because it's not just that we condemn, we condemn this time around. Measures are henceforth of the United States. Well, um, when conflict like this happen, um, international community, allies and friends of the country affected, before they react, they must analyze a series of um, actions, uh, looking at possibly their investment, their policy in place, how does it affect their nation, and how is it going to affect their nation, if they come in with options, do they have options, what are the options they have on the table, they have option A, should there be targeted sanction? if targeted sanctions are imposed, uh, what will be the effect on the economy and what will be the effect on their military overseas? If they come in with um, the U.S. U UN uh, dialogue with the U.N. to have it on the agenda, what could be the effect of the ally uh, that they have, like France and other allies? Now, when we look at this, it therefore gives us a picture to understand that the options that uh, Trump, uh, the former administration had, uh, U.S. administration had, was not... Um, for direct intervention was also not for restriction and they had what was known uh, in the late um, 1920s as the policy of a kind of isolationism in terms of foreign policy but Biden administration the Biden administration I think they now we need to redefine their policy and they have redefined their policy to say okay we have options uh, this is not the first time that US is voicing now sanction uh, visa restrictions. Remember that two weeks ago we had a similar action that was taken in Ethiopia and in Eritrea uh, regarding the war which is ongoing in the Tigari region. And what happened there was the difference between this one that has been uh, announced in Cameroon and that of the Tigari region against Ethiopia government and Eritrea government is that names were called for Ethiopia, names not like um, they, they, they said, okay, Mr. A, B, but they artic actually articulated by stating that government ministers and former ministers in both Eritrea and Ethiopia will not be given visa based on the fact that they are not in favor of 
uh, this escalating the conflict in the Tigari region. The, in the case of Cameroon, um, we have not been told by this community that government or former government officials or separatist officials or non -separatist, uh, separatists are to be held out to be given restriction. So you see the difference with Cameroon there is that they are still to define the policy and like they are testing the waters and everybody, I think I like this, po this position because and like everybody because people are, are kind of confused is it me mm. am i there so the is it, it, it's a policy that tell them that they, you have to reshape what you, are, you have to shape what you're talking about because today you don't know whether it is this minister or it's not this minister i remember when these sanctions are giving restrictions it's not only to their families if it is not only to themselves but their families and loved ones because your family the international community recognized that your family, if you are given a res visa restriction, you could send your family to do business. So your entire household sometimes is restricted. So basically, this is just the first step. A lot of uh, innovation, as we were told, will be coming in the days ahead. Okay. Um, the, 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 the community actually says, uh, states that um, the United States is uh, deeply concerned by the continued violence in the Anglophone regions of uh, Cameroon, how concerned has the United States uh, been since the advent of the Anglophone crisis? Well, uh, to and me... So it's taking a different, a different uh, turn. Yes, it's taking a different turn this time around because initially we saw the Congress wrote mm. warning the separatists and the government to come to a consensus and then solve the problem. Mm. Later on, the U.S. House of Senate, the Senate wrote also I think amongst all the international we bodies, we saw on that secretary, yes, on that uh, secretary. who called for for pe people who are engaged in violent activities to to be aware to that they were no longer going to be supported. Good, that is you discovered that since from the time of Tibonagi, mm -hmm. America has been involved in the Anglophone crisis, and I must say that it, they are the only international body or country that have developed so much interest in the Anglophone crisis. Second, Canada, who also asked for the Francophonie to give them an opportunity and the Commonwealth in order to see how they can bring a permanent peace to what is happening in Cameroon. And uh, with respect to what the U.S. has been done so far, I have been doing so far, I think diplomacy may be slow, but it is sure. Diplomacy may be slow, but it is sure. It is taking that he was interested in what is happening in the southern Cameroon, in Cameroon, and equal what is happening in Ethiopia. And so far, he's not been up to... Uh, a year in power, he's already taken measures both in Tigray, whom he said in his inaugural speech, and also in the Southern Cameroon's crisis that is taking place in Cameroon. So I think Anthony Blinken's approach to the crisis and from his uh, 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 his inaugural speech, he's meaning what he says and he's saying what he means. Okay. Uh, we have just been joined by uh, our senior barrister Ashu. Emmanuel is the national president of the Reform Party. Uh, is this uh, also a victory for you guys, uh, members of the Coalition for Dialogue and uh, Negotiations? You, are, you told us uh, some months back here in this studio that um, the United States was going to swing into action. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Good evening, Mr. De Kangaruman. And <laughs> somebody and uh, dear the viewers, well, I would not consider that a victory because we knew we knew it was going to come. Um, we have been warning people to, to make a while the sun shines, but uh, the warmongers thought that they were going to have a field day till the end of the of the season. So, well, I think they should start uh, looking for their blankets because there are colder days ahead for them. This is just the beginning, because when, when you, you look at the, the sanctions, the possible sanctions that are lined up in that Resolution 684, this is just the beginning. They should eventually expect to be ferried to the International Court of Justice, because International Criminal Court, because uh, you cannot commit what we see them committing, and you expect to go scot-free. So anyway, we thank the American government for swinging into action. We uh, state that, well, we want this crisis to come to an immediate end as quickly as possible so that Cameroonians can enjoy some measure of peace. Today, we are not having peace. We are living in pieces, and we think that 
if more pressure were brought to bear on the people who are funding this crisis, then this solution, the solution to this crisis will be put on the table as fast as possible. Okay, um, the kangaroo man is here with us. Good evening, Far Evi Satayong. Um, yes, many televiewers have been <laughs> asking, eh, where is the kangaroo man? The kangaroo man is here with us this evening. I'll continue reading uh, the outing of uh, Anthony Blinken, U.S. Secretary of State. Uh, it says that we continue to call for both the separatist armed groups to end the violence and engage in a dialogue without preconditions to peacefully resolve uh, the crisis. Uh, both sides are asked uh, to engage in dialogue without preconditions. Um, how does it work out? Um, well, you have to understand that uh, since the release mm. of uh, that uh, statement from the U.S. State Department, you will get to understand that many have misinterpreted it mm -hmm. to work for their favor in one way or the other. Yes, everybody is saying that it is yes. in our favor. Mm -hmm. In our favor. And I think that it will be good for us to teach Yaoundé some diplomatic lessons so that they should understand that it's not just a matter of ranting, but it's a matter of things that are for sure. But I must thank the Coalition for Dialogue and Negotiation in which we are all, both of us here on this platform, are members. I uh, think Barrister is also part of the member, is a member. I want to thank the advisory committee as well as uh, the, uh, the committee, steering committee who have quite been working day in, day out with the communication committee where I also belong <laughs> to ensure that things happen. Now, you see, Mr. Leo, there are some things that we will be moving on. But we also know that other factors, other persons have equally played their own role at the backstage in one way or the other. You remember that we have several groups that are doing diplomatic moves at the background, and so it has to get to somewhere. Now, when we look at that kind of outing, and uh, you realize that people have been ranting. I was surprised that even government officials not, do not understand diplomacy at all. Maybe it's because they understand and they refuse to, 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 to put it in practice, or for one reason or the other. Now, if you look at that statement, Mr. Liu, and the first thing I told many of those psycho fans in Yaoundé that you don't need to jubilate because you think that it involves in equal terms the both parties involved in the conflict. No. It involves them, yes, but the greater portion of that diplomatic statement holds more on the person who has a knife and a yam to decide if the conflict should end or not. Of course, the regime barons are at the center stage. Now, when you look at it, Mr. Liu, based on that statement, it tells you obviously that both parties are supposed to be there. But now, to be involved in resolving the conflict, the question now is, who has the real way? The state in any government, if you go even to Cambodia, you describe the fact rebels themselves were equally in line with the government. The government took a bold step to ensure that the over 50 years war had to come to an end. So any government that considers another weaker party as a rebel is supposed to initiate. That's what we said earlier that the kangaroo system of what they called the national dialogue, which was a CPDM family affair, was not in line with that. Um, some psycho fans in Yaoundé told me that, no, Yaoundé had tried best because they have been calling for the separatist fighters, fighters to come. But we asked them, under what condition were you calling them? Did you respect the principles of conflict resolution? Oh, no. So if you do not respect that, it means that you did not call for a dialogue, but you call for a family meeting, which is considered null and void in the international community as far as conflict resolution is concerned. Now, if you look at that statement, Mr. Liu, we have said, we have told several psycho fans in Yaoundé, just like King of what Barista Ashu is saying, that they need to get more blankets because the heat is on. And as I said, if you look at it, uh, between when the statement came in and us today, I have underground information in the U.S. that most of the psycho fans in Yaoundé have called their lawyers out there in the U.S. of A to change most of their belongings into their brothers or relatives' names because they know what is coming. But of course, that process cannot go because the U.S. is not a fool. Before they come to this statement, Mr. Lee, you understand we have a kangaroo parliament. We have several committees in it. And when these committees sit, whatever they decide has no importance except a to the decide. But in the West democratic system, once a committee, be it security committee, be it foreign committee, start taking a decision, no matter once they agree unanimously, that decision is transferred into the government, which is now being used, which is now being transferred as a policy. Because these things do not start today, Mr. Liu. Remember, we have been here on platform several times talking about the uh, U.S. Congress and some psycho fans still from the members of parliament, they said, 
Yaoundé is singing a song, or that the uh, U.S. is singing a song and they're interfering. Now, the time for us to talk about who is interfering has already come. Okay. So that is how it is. I'll be coming back because we need to teach Yaoundé diplomatic lessons this today because <laughs> the heat is on and me man no run. Understand? I'm not run. Okay. Uh, good evening to you, Gilberto Salo. Uh, pa Denis, uh, good evening to you, Chisap. Uh, Mark Emos Andy, and to you, my lovely sister Mbong Jifoy Ngu Tamufo. I'm glad to note that you are watching. And also to you, my brother watching from the United States, uh, Tom Jarvis, uh, Fondon Richard. Good evening to you and uh, all of you. Fondon Richard, I always get uh, yeah, <laughs> your recommendations. I'm glad. Yes, um, Tamai Jarvis, there is this issue of we want both sides to engage in dialogue without preconditions. Is it possible because on, on the one, one hand, they will say we want to talk uh, separation. On the other hand, they will say we don't want to talk separation. How do we find a common ground? Break time is over. Mm. That was what we, we saw. It means break time is over. Mm. Now they don't have no, um, there is nothing like uh, with one preconditions, we don't want preconditions. At this point in time, the U.S. is telling you that you must dialogue mr Ayo, if you look at this very this are uh, the outing of the u.s secretary of state remember that when trump came to power rex tillison the then secretary of state uh did not have did not establish a u.s policy u.s is ruled by policies and procedures and sometimes if you don't lay down a policy it is difficult for a government to operate now when mike pompeo took over power uh came 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 uh, replaced rex tillison mike pompeo too still did not uh in introduce a policy framework under which U.S. government can fully monitor or react as far as the Anglophone crisis is concerned. Biden administration now with uh, Blinken, he has set in a policy. What he did was to set in a policy, an official policy, telling the Cameroon's government and the separatist fighters that, hey, there will be consequences now. If you react like this, know that there will be consequences. It's not like there may be consequences. It is clear that there will be consequences. Now, talk, asking the question if both parties can come on the table, it is the factual. Whether they go to heaven or go to hell, they will sit on the table. Whether they like it or not, whether the government of Cameroon or the no-state ambush like it or not, they will dialogue on the table. But the question now with preconditions or not precondition, it now stemmed down from the policy of, of conflict resolution. Fight actually articulated something which is clear that in this kind of conflict where you see that a nation, a state is fighting a rebel, the state must take that step ahead to follow conventions which bind that state. For example, Cameroon is a signatory to, a new, to numerous conventions. There's no state angles. They are not signatories to conventions. So that's why you see the no state angles cannot take the matter to the U.S. Security Council. They can only lobby friendly nations or partner groups to take the matter up to Security Council. But the state of Cameroon has that power to take the matter to Security Council because it is bound by conventions. Now, on the issue of dialogue without precondition or condition, the state of Cameroon understands the need of dialogue and notes that for, dialogue, for the conflict to, to be resolved, dialogue must take place without preconditions, meaning that they must go on the table and dialogue and discuss with these people. But the question now is, if the state of Cameroon decides that we want to dialogue in Cameroon and we don't want to dialogue in the U.S., they are putting, they are putting uh, preconditions. If the North State Group says we don't want to dialogue in Cameroon, want to dialogue somewhere, they are putting uh, preconditions. Now, what is the area, the, 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 the lowest common multiple, what we call the L CM, where all of them has need to look at the lowest common multiple now will be ref, uh, uh, relating them back to the to the Geneva Convention and on conflict resolution. What U.S. is saying and what are these principles that dialogue must be initiated by the superior power and taken to a neutral venue where both parties can talk without problems or without the, the, the weaker party feeling like they are going to be intimidated or they may be intimidated. In this regard, what does it mean? It means that Yaoundé should take this negotiation out of Cameroon and see where they both can discuss. If we look at what happened in Eritrea, similar dialogue was called into place. If we look at what happened in Ethiopia itself when uh, Ami Abed came to power, 
similar dialogue was called into place. People dialogue out of the, the conflict zone. You cannot be dialoguing within the conflict zone with a country, with a state or a government that has proven beyond any reasonable doubt that they don't keep to their, to their word. If you look at what is binding the principle of dialogue, for example, when this conflict started, we, we have a whole, a whole lot of professors in Yaoundé, within and out, that were talking about resolving this conflict. The state of Cameroon organized a major national dialogue, but forgot about five key principles of conflict resolution. The first was think before you react. Cameroon government reacted before thinking by stating that there's no anglophone crisis, hey, there's no anglophone crisis, this are this, this are that, this are that. The second step is listening, you must listen to key stakeholders. The state of Cameroon and the non-state and the, 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 the lawyers probably did not listen to each other. Not now, when the government was saying this, this other guys were saying this. The second issue is assuring a fair process. Both parties do not assure a fair process. The fair process in this major national dialogue that ended two years ago was simply where should the dialogue take place? Who are those stakeholders? If we bring in Yaoundé, will this happen? They did not. The next aspect is attack the problem, not the people. But we see people are being attacked and not the problem. We feel like when we attack people, we attack ministers, we attack no state angles, we attack journalists, we feel like we are resolving the problem. Mm. So in not in the in not share what we refer these people into that dialogue will be the principle of the Geneva Convention and principle governing uh, dialogue or conflict resolution, and that they will be forced to go on the table. Apostle Lambe Valentengua, uh, the statement uh, reads it is important that children can attend school and that humanitarian aid can be delivered uh, to where uh, they are most uh, needed. Uh, is it uh, here? The United States is uh, clearly saying that. Uh, those not involved in this conflict should be clearly spared. Yes, I think uh, you know if you follow America has four foreign policies. Mm. First is to to protect the United States and Americans. Mm. Secondly is to advance democracy, human rights and um, a certain level of freedom. Then to protect American diplomats and all American civil servants and personnel that work out of America. That's their focus. So if you look at it critically, human rights is one of the priorities of the American foreign policy. Mm. And this human right is global. It has nothing to do with race or color or any people. So we hear them making emphasis of children have to go to school. That is the basic right of any child. According to UNESCO Stata, education is a right to every child. So if at all they are violating that right, they are infringing on one of U.S. foreign policies by trying to jeopardize the education of children. So if at all you see they are laying emphasis in that area, they are trying to point a finger on every individual who by any means is contributing to the factor or to the fact that people are not going to school or people are not going to school, you must be able to understand that that statement is referring to a lot of people. It has nothing to do with a particular person. Mm -hmm. It has to do with those who are influencing children not to go to school, those who are carrying acts of insecurity to children not to go to school, those who are suspending school activities in one way or the other. That is what that statement is saying here. Mm -hmm. They can be speaking to you. Diplomacy is very funny. They will speak to you in an indirect way. Mm -hmm. In that statement, they are telling us in Cameroon that if you know you are part of the person who contribute for children not to go to school, that particular phrase is pointing at you. Mm. You should be very, very careful because when they are coming, they will come for those who have influenced the, 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 the how do I put it? That stopped the schools. That stopped schools from, from going on. So yeah. if we, we find ourselves in that shoe, know that this foreign policy is coming with a double-edged sword. Mm. It's going and, to be touching um, humanitarian to workers are supposed to equally. They are supposed to circulate, yeah. yeah. Mm. And who are the persons that block humanitarian workers from carrying out their activities? All those things will be sorted out. And you must understand that America will not launch this statement without carrying out proper investigations. They have everything on ground mm. before you hear them making this statement. They know who they are targeting. They know who they are directing those statements to, and they know who they are coming for. Mm. Because much time has been given, and appropriate time has been given for the two parties to resolve the problem by themselves. And based on what the U.S. Congress wrote, the U.S. Senate wrote, the U.S. Under Secretary of Africa also said, those are periods where they gave Cameroon government the opportunity and the separatists to resolve the crisis. Why they were taking their facts on ground? You know, human rights kept advancing. Human rights what? Kept advancing facts on what was happening in Cameroon. The atrocities of the separatists, the atrocities of the government, and all these facts have been assembled so far 
far and now when you hear this statement is made is based on the first gather so for so many years secondly they have given the company the people of Cameroon and the separatists enough opportunity and chance to solve the problem by themselves now that you have refused not to hit to the command or the demand of the United States they themselves now are stepping into the matter and if you hear them making statement that we we want dialogue without preconditions they are telling those who have always put condition before dialogue that this time around you are not going to have a field day this time around you are going to operate according to the satisfaction of both parties you are not coming as if you are coming to impose on individuals so anybody who has lived within the five years of this crisis should be able to read that communique and know what has been addressed to the separatists and know what has been addressed to the government okay you are saying that um okay that there are statements that directly indict the separatists and uh, of course the government. both parties are involved in those statements if yeah. you are critically observe and follow the crisis the u.s secretary of state is not addressing a particular party the u.s secretary of state is launching a complaint based on facts gathered by different personalities and certain um, institutions in america for instance the u.s senate wrote when they wrote they gave a lot of facts or ground what has been happening and in those their communiques they also want the government and they want the separatists the congress did the same thing the u.s under secretary of state also came and did the same thing so you discover those parties involved are implicated but if you discover if, if you have followed all this crisis all through that you reach that communique yeah. you will know very well that this statement is going to this person just like an examination mm -hmm. is said before you will know what to answer mm -hmm. they would seize the question but you will know what to answer so <laughs> based on the analysis i go through on that communique mm -hmm. it's certain that everybody is involved that uh, children have to go to school but it goes uh, further to say we urge all relevant stakeholders in cameroon and in the diaspora to engage constructively and seek a peaceful resolution uh, to the crisis. Um, is this where you people are coming in? Uh, it's time for people to listen to, to stakeholders like uh, the Coalition for Dialogue and Negotiation, uh, both thank in you. Cameroon and out of Cameroon. Thank you, Mr. Leo. You see, uh, we have to thank the Secretary of State for making certain things very clear. The first thing that I see as being very clear in that is communique is uh, the parties, who are the parties? Because uh, many people used to tell us, oh, it's a Cameroon internal, internal affair. Now we are very sure that the, it's dawning on them that the parties are separatists and the government. So we know the parties, we know who are the parties. Now, uh, they say any person who encourages violence, we want the war to end. They say go to the negotiating table. Unfortunately, we don't have any negotiations ongoing. There are no negotiations ongoing. And uh, people who have been used to organizing Jangi House meetings and lie to the public and pretending that those are negotiations, I hope that this time they will learn their lessons. They should not come up with any such Jangi House meeting anymore because this time around, This time around, we are supposed to have uh, a, a real negotiation that should concern all the stakeholders. Of course. We shall start thinking about the Swiss stocks. The Swiss stocks, or maybe some other body. Or some other body that may come up. Why not the CDN? Why not the CDN? The CDN can come up with uh, negotiations between the parties and say, okay, we want. To act as a mediator, very possible. Very possible. Yeah, but when 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 when, when they say um, they should engage in constructive and constructive action uh, to seek uh, a, a, a peaceful resolution to the crisis. Thank you. Constructively. Thank you. Constructive action. When they tell you that children should go to school, that means that the war should end. The constructive action here means stop the fighting. Because without that, without you stopping the fighting, you can talk of no peace. Children cannot go to school. Uh, you cannot do anything. Stop the fighting first. Stop the fighting first. Without precondition. Without precondition. Don't tell her that the state cannot stop. Sir, stop without precondition. Uh, it may be the one the Americans will tell them before they will stop. Stop it. Stop the fighting. Because there is no more question of big brother, small brother. Stop the fighting. Peace has to reign now and if you don't want the peace it will come to you you either start doing it yourself or you'll be forced to do it so the preconditions that were being put by certain people who are we talking to who are we, uh, who is who no sir it's finished 
We know who you'll be talking to. We know the parties. Please stop. We know all the actions you're carrying out in the field. Stop them. Make sure that when the dialogue, the dialogue starts, you cooperate fully. You cooperate fully. Otherwise, you will be brought to book. You see, I, I said earlier, we know the catalog of sanctions that are awaiting them. We know. This is the first step. Or that will be killed up. So if they don't want to move, yeah, but they uh, will be made to sanctions, move. Sanctions by who? By who, has, who has issued sanctions there? Okay, the U.S. is going to Who sanction. has issued sanctions? You know the U.S. has its network <laughs> of countries that are supporting okay, um, it. Yes. International coalition led by the U.S. Sorry, don't, don't bother. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the statement uh, states in clear terms that we condemn those who undermine peace through engaging in or inciting violence, human rights violations and abuses, and threats against advocates uh, for peace, humanitarian workers. Who are these persons? Because that is the crux of the matter. We are restricting, yeah. oh, to him, re we are restricting visa, uh, uh, yes, yeah. possibilities. <laughs> but who are these persons now? Now, Leo, let me come back to tell you exactly. Let me, let me give you, um, an in-depth of what that means mm. because you are asking to know exactly who are the persons mm. now in the first place what we hear visa restriction mm. now the first thing is that when you talk about visa restriction the man who is in the US does not need visa to go to US point number one it simply means that anybody out of US is that one who needs visa to get into US that's where it comes first that's why I said that it's still diplomatic that Yaoundé they, they need to get up from sleep because I said this thing weighs more, 70% on Yaoundé regime. You have litanies of colonels, colonels, generals, administrators and all like, who are in a list as far as this entire uh, Wahala is concerned. It is a reality. If you look at after the Rwandan genocide, there were, there were colonels, there were captains, there were mayors even who were involved in the genocide, who were picked up after that. But they thought that they were going scot-free. So in this issue of visa restriction, first things first, before America comes out with this kind of uh, statement, after several lobbies from uh, Coalition for Dialogue and Negotiation and other parties concerned, what is for sure, a detailed study has already been done. When you look at that study, Mr. Leo, what they say for, for concerning parties involved, they know already the parties. I repeat, the U.S. knows the people concerned. And the funny thing is that if the U.S. can know the people, and then you, your own regime, you say you don't know who to dialogue with, it means that you are kidding. So at the end of all of this, those concerned, we have two main parties involved. Now, it weighs more, as I said, Leo, because there's an upper uh, party, or there's a bigger party that has the name on the yam, to decide if the thing should come to an end or not. Now, on the aspect of what is transpiring on the ground, we also understand that there are what we call facts gathering on the ground as I speak. It did not start today. It started since the start of the crisis. Whereby, we have what we call propaganda, which is on the move. For example, probably a non arm actor could put on a uniform and carry an action purporting to be military. And military could decide. We have several cases where military disguises with unclean hairs and everything to storm an area, probably disguising as a non state arm actors to get information. And sometimes, you know, in the course of crossfire, they are involved in one or two things. And so the atrocities in the way that we have propaganda in the whole issue. Now, in the course of this, when as investigations are currently going on, with some facts already gathered, clean and clear, it will become an issue that while we move on both sides, now those who are charged, who are involved directly in carrying out the acts, be it on the side of the government or on the other side, will automatically have to come in as individuals, I repeat, as individuals to answer for their crimes and that, 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 to have that, what, what, what we have to understand, like uh, my sister, uh, Foy, uh, Jim Bong, out there is saying, is that the uh, restrictions are already effective, eh? Because he, he says he says that I am establishing a policy imposing visa restrictions on individuals who are believed to be responsible for, which means that there are individuals who are believed to be responsible as we speak. It is it is it's, no, it's already, already yeah. informed. That's why I said that. That's why I said that I have first hand information in the US where some of the attorneys were were called on by the people here. To start working on if they could because this is the first step mr leo and when the step comes we keep on look at the case of a salai law firm when he was carrying out that obviously he knew to, 
So we thought that it will work probably in their favor. And these are some of the other attorneys I'm talking about who are currently, as we speak now, mm -hmm. trying to secure the properties of the other persons or of the parties who are here because the parties, yo, they know mm -hmm. themselves already. I'm sorry to tell you, the parties I'm talking about, mm -hmm. as Yawande is watching me, the individuals, they have already been hinted because they know that it is end time for them. We are okay. not debating on that. Okay. Uh, good evening to you, TV Tetu, Natuyumbo Bate. Uh, La Belle Edi, good evening to you, Nde Livinus and uh, Jacques Chilgo. And uh, to you, uh, Love Kinton Cynthia. Mankind, good evening to you, Mbo Lexus and uh, Neba Nelson. Uh, H.E. Benji, Lofo William, good evening to you, Quincy Derek Fu. And uh, to you, David and Chamba. And uh, Arnold Fokwen, good evening to you, Chris Mutale. And uh, to you, Uchiba. Uh, Chondu Nelson, um, Eno Edwin, good evening to you, um, Enene Alain, Emmanuel Ekpumban, good evening to you, all of you watching us on uh, social media. But that is the big question now. Are uh, many persons on both camps now very uncertain of the fact that they may, may be, 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 be key targets? I... I, I like the ambiguity because seemingly yes. everybody is trying That's to what shift. I'm this. saying yeah. I like the ambiguity of this outing because if names were put in place, people would say, Thank God, I am safe, thank God, and it will give them that legitimacy to mm -hmm. continue with illegality, illegal actions. The fact that it is ambiguous, nobody knows exactly who is involved is, is a good thing. Remember that. When we talk about visa restriction, we get people celebrating that, hey, I will not have to, thank God, I am not going to the U.S. or that U.S. on separate uh, leaders will tell you that, well, thank God, I am not coming to Kamo anytime soon. But remember this, Mr. Liu, that it is not only the government as many people are seeing it. I want, I want now to, to, to paint the, the other side of the picture, like, because some persons were saying that, no, we are talking as though it's only the government. It's not. This is what happened, Mr. Liu. The separatists don't have did not sign any international convention to uphold principles of war and Geneva conventions but they are principles that bind them to their actions which is separate from state affairs for example they carry out actions they cannot be judged as a nation but they can be judged as individual who has violated human rights or who has committed crime against humanity mm. and if a nation like Cameroon is not a signatory to ICC or other convention there's what we call um, a, 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 a there is a commission that has been formed and that commission which is from I've forgotten the name to the name of that commission, but there's a commission that's from that it, it was from in Burundi, which brings parties together and judge them to say to to to, to pay for them to yes they, yeah they're good that 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 that's it uh, now that when that tribunal is called up it's called up for people who are not signatories to some of these conventions. So when I hear when this conflict started, I hear some government officials are saying that Cameroon is not a signature to this, not a signature to that, is not a signature to this, but there is a tribunal. A tribunal is called of countries that are not signatories to international conventions, but are bound by principles of the United Nations. Now the truth is is Cameroon a member of the United Nations? Yes. Is Cameroon a member of of, of, of this that yes. Now this is what happened I was talking about the impact now on the separatist camp. When we talk about precondition, some people feel like when the separatists or the no state angle says we don't want to dialogue in Yaoundé, is precondition. No, that's not precondition. That is the dialogue process. Precondition simply means that I will not come on that table if you don't talk this, you don't talk that, you don't talk this, you don't talk that. That is precondition. But if somebody tells you my safety is not guaranteed, I cannot come to a point A, it is not precondition. It is simply a process which engage in dialogue. Now, if you both agree that, okay, the, the area in which this this uh, dialogue is called upon is not suitable for the safety of Mr. A is not guaranteed. Then you move to another area. We have seen preconditions. Some uh, separatists are saying that if it's not independent, nothing else. If it's not this, nothing else. This is what will happen. There are two categories of punishment. Those who are not Cameroonian, who are Americans, the, the non-state armed groups who are already Americans, who have the American nationality, they will not be affected by the State Department. The State Department will not affect them in terms of policies, but they were affected by the Homeland Security, the Department of Homeland Security. It is that department that probes American citizens who finance armed group overseas. Now it is the Department of Homeland Security upon recommendation from the State Department. Because if State Department can, can realize that we are struggling to 
to resolve a conflict in a, in out of the state out of uh, in a, in a continent because the state department is in charge of policy out of america foreign policies while the homeland security homeland security is in charge of internal security and american citizens in america sponsoring terrorism now if those the state department like the have said that, uh, uh blinking have said that okay we have realized that mr a in america is supporting an armed conflict in cameroon and we have called that this party should come on the table mr a is not reacting and mr a is selling guns to cameroon contrary to this this homeland security then take that action this is what will happen those who are saying that they don't want dialogue based on the fact that it's independent or nothing else and when they that dialogue will call up and they don't come on that table this is what will happen the homeland security work on their case those who are Cameroonians who definitely are not Cameroonians uh, who are Cameroonians but are living in the US what will happen is they are likely to be deported and judged in Cameroon for the Cameroon government officials this will happen if at, the, at one point in time they refuse to go on the dialogue table they refuse to adhere on the dialogue principles this is what may happen to them targeted sanction in terms of their asset their properties and and, and where you take their, their properties and some of their assets another issue now is U.S. start lobbying with Canada, which is a friendly nation that okay imposes other impose their own sanction. You feel like you may want to run to Canada. Canada imposes. You may want to run to this other nation imposes. At one point in time, you are caught between now where to come back on that table. So there is no place to run for both parties. There is no place to run for Cameroon government. There is no place place to run for the separatist arm, for the separatist armed group. The only place. For them now is let's ask ourselves: Can we go to Nigeria and talk? Can we go to Ghana and talk? Can we go to Swiss and talk? And when we talk about talk, what are we going to talk about? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I want us. I want you to react uh, to the outing of uh, Tibo Nagi. Um, he says that please to see the U.S. government impose visa sanctions on those responsible for continuing violence in Cameroon's anglophone regions. As I've said in all my remarks, neither side can win through violence which Bia and secessionists would both recognize this and end the suffering. To tie with what you are saying, that yes. both sides are clearly... Uh, yes, there. if you look at the communique, for mm -hmm. somebody who has critically followed this crisis from the very beginning, that communique implicates the separatists as well as the government. Even though the statements are not tacked, separatists or this one tax government the statement there is implicating the different activities there are some activities that are undeniably actions of separatists and there are also other activities that are undeniably the actions of the government so i'm sure the u.s is coming in between more as a mediator to save the interests of the common man because the two persons in question that the U.S. is attacking are the people who are promoting this violence. There are people from the side of the government who do not want the war to cease because of their personal interests. Likewise, on the other side. Now, these two elephants are fighting. The man in between is caught in between the crossfire. And since United Nations, one of its foreign policies is that they should protect human rights. I'm sure their primary objective stepping into this crisis is to protect human rights. There are people who are neither for the separatists nor for the government. They are the ones who are caught in between the crossfire. And that is what I think is dragging the interest of the United Nations, the United States. If you look at the case of uh, Papua New Guinea, they had their crisis in Bougainville. Bougainville is one of the areas in Papua New Guinea where that gave 70%, I mean 70% of the resources that sustained the nation from Papua New Guinea came from this little community. This community started demanding for secession, and then there was a long war between the state of Papua New Guinea and the Bougainville people, which influenced Australia to block the sea supply of food to this poor Bougainville. But you see, they brought a division among the separatists for some time. But they divided after some time, they came back to their senses and started fighting. What happened was that it was New Zealand, not the United Nations. United Nations came to that environment and then they said, I want to make that place a UN trust territory. After some time, the thing continued. The war did not stop. It was New Zealand that came in between, stopped the crisis, and then conducted a referendum. The referendum was conducted and they put 98% of Bogan people voted for secession. And when they voted for secession, they gave them 20 years to live in between the proper New Guinea and themselves to see if the people can change in 2019. For after 20 years, this 2019, the poor live for the 20 years. They want secession completely. They want secession. But now they say they will give them dual nationality. Since they have lived for so long, which you can move into Papua New Guinea and move to Bougainville without having contradiction. What about trying to communicate here? The United States is coming here not as a UN. 
is coming as a body whose foreign policy is interested in the well-being of individuals as human rights and i'm sure it was on the premise of in the format of that particular human rights focus on their foreign policy that is pushing them to come to cameroon now and enter in between the government and the secessionists and if i can tell with all sincerity they are not just coming in favor of a particular team they are coming here to make sure that the both parties traumatizing the common man should be brought to book recently united states gave readers visa sanctions to uganda uganda general came out and said he will live and die in uganda and if you look at they, they get the visa sanctions to, to uganda but they did not mention no individuals but the military general was fast to come out why they said they mismanaged the elections that came up during bobby wine uh, again bobby wine and, and Museveni. it Eh? Yeah, Robert Kyagulana, who is Boy Wine. That visa, that visa restriction, can, it was a general respondent. That is to tell you that if they say they are going to restrict visas, there are two things we have to put in consideration here. The persons in question, whom they say they are at the diaspora, influencing the activities here, they don't need visa. The guys in the push who are carrying guns to, 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 for security, they don't need visa. Who is in need of visa in this case? That is what we have to understand. Who are the persons also who say children should not go to school? Who are the persons? From what we have gathered here, we know the people that have been influencing the no school campaign. The government of the United States is also addressing that thing to them. That's why I say, if you have followed the crisis very well, the statements are coded, but they are targeted to particular individuals. Now, if these two persons are not smart enough to discover the potency of those statements and the continue the activities, the government of America will come and pick these two elephants fighting and hit their head while the common man is saved. Yeah, because um, uh, we are going to, to look. Uh, later on, but some persons would say, uh, like uh, we are saying, he says it is targeting both sides, but um, the separatists, uh, they will say that uh, they don't need a visa to come to Cameroon. And then uh, some government officials would also say that we have other uh, better destinations. We could go to Russia and China and the like. Uh, wh what am I going to do in, in America? Is it uh, saying that it may start here and later on move to targeted sanctions? Mr. Hmm? Liu, uh, I beg... Okay. Okay, just let, conclude. Conclude. Yeah. let me conclude mm. this is this what you hear they say they are giving visa sanctions mm. eh? america is like a cluster of so many nations that statement that he's speaking like this at least 50 other nations are saying that same statement mm. so don't be surprised that you want to go to america you are blocked you want to go to france you are blocked because that single statement has wings and branches tentacles so we should be very careful they are going to engage yes yeah, Mr. Leo, I beg to differ a bit because uh, uh, we will be tempted to think that Cameroonians who are in the diaspora don't need visas. That's, that's, that's an overstatement because uh, if somebody is targeted and is in the United States, I, I pray you don't leave the United States because if you leave, you will not come back. You won't go back there. Those of them who think that they don't need visas, they are fooling themselves. They are really targeted. Because they, if you are targeted and you leave the U.S., you will not be able to go back there. That is what, what it means. You, when you leave, you go out, they won't give you the visa to come back. So it is concerning everybody. And uh, those who are in the bushes, who are fighting in the bushes, they are as well concerned. If the U.S. has your name, then you will not be able to travel to the U.S. And as you were saying, we are in fact dealing here with the international, with an international coalition led by the U.S. So it is not just the U.S. You can be surprised that that thing will be extended to other countries like Canada, like England, France and all that. So uh, it, it is better for these people to cooperate and to see to it that peace returns very fast. And all those who have been fanning this conflict from behind, please, so a word to a wise man is enough. So try and uh, play your own quarter so that peace returns because if it does not return and you are targeted, now, well, as I will say, it's just the beginning, eh? Yeah, but if this is, uh, it is actually effective as we speak, whoever is involved in the war as we speak now, it is, uh, they are already um, being targeted, targeted by the U.S. Yes, but how is it going to affect them? Is well, the fact it, it, has, it will affect them in, in, the, in the sense that if you leave, you have to leave Cameroon, mm. to go out, out of Cameroon. Then you realize that you cannot do so. Because, for instance, okay, look at Europe. They have the Schengen visa. Mm. So if the U.S. 
is in accord with the, with the, with the Europeans, then you cannot enter even Europe. Canada is the same thing. You see, so don't think that because you, you, are, uh, 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 you are not going to, Europe, uh, to USA, you are not concerned. No. Mm. If, it is, if they extend it to Europe, you are finished. Or Australia, because they are all the same people. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I just wanted to, yeah, to, add, to add to what he's saying, you know. Um, if you look at it, um, like talk about the measures. Mm -hmm. We have uh, quite uh, other measures that are coming on board, as I said earlier. Uh, with the steps, that's the first step of the visa restriction. We know the first, the other one that will come up has to do with freezing of the accounts wherever they are because they are currently working on them and they have cited a handful of them. You know, the, the, the irony in the whole issue is that with the, if you look at the regime, for example, the regime in Yaoundé, more than 90% of them, their accounts and their assets are out there, are not even in the country. As I speak now, the uh, United Nations, uh, that is what we call uh, the, 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 the State House, as of now, the Foreign Committee is currently meeting as we speak. And the Cameroon ambassador to the U.S. is there now on hearing, as we speak, as I'm talking to you now. It's ongoing, mm -hmm. and which means that they are they are giving him, they are discussing because he has to take commitments after this hearing this night, which continues to put into effect the visa restriction, which has been announced already because it has been enacted already. It is already into in motion. So you could imagine what we're saying here that while we are talking here, full action is in place as I speak, and that's why I said that. If you look at the whole uh, gimmicks coming around, it tells you that all what have been taking place for the past years in terms of Congress, foreign, uh, the, the foreign committees sitting and all the like, this is the result that we find here. Now, you realize here that from all what the, has been taking place, it becomes imperative that after this hearing, now, and briefings that will be given with instructions mm -hmm. to the U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon, who is new, you have now to come down and begin to ensure the implementation vis-a-vis -vis his homeland, that is U.S. of A and the government. So you discover that as the hearing is going on, we are now saying like what uh, Barrister said, that uh, you need to get the blanket because the colder days are still ahead. And this is reality. Yeah, but, I know that uh, Yaoundé understands that but they should be briefed. Also, they are, they are also, uh, most of these guys are for what they call the... No. International I, 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 I was almost coming to another passport. Would yeah. they really need to go to the U.S. Embassy to travel? Of course. No, they will still they will, they will still need so long as okay. Yeah, that, that, Maybe Barrister comes in before I come in. Yeah, Mr. Liu, you see, you have, you have an international passport. What what happens? Well, if you have international passport, mm. um, there there are many ways of catching a rat. <laughs> <laughs> they said that's they, they're that's talking that's of that's visa that's restrictions. Mm -hmm. They say visa restrictions. Yes. They are not only which one because there is something we are losing sight of here. Mm. We are looking at the individuals. But let me assure you that these people are aware that you can travel through your brother or your son or your daughter. So uh, we were we were actually advised to look for the uh, the families of all these people so that don't think that because you are not going to travel, your child can travel, sir. Don't dream of yeah. It concerns you that it's up to second degree. And so, so, mm -hmm. so like a uh, is saying, mm -hmm. if you look at the work that the Coalition for Dialogue and Negotiations put in place, it does not revolve only around the key actors. Mm -hmm. As she is saying normally, because you could equally say I try to go and do your business, carry on your business in America and come back. And so the relatives that are around you are also going to pay the price. You could imagine how heavy it will be. Now, when you look at it, Mr. Leo, another issue that I say is still going to be very complex and way more on the side of the regime is that if you look at like for those who are in the diaspora now you get you understand that most of them have double, dual nationalities now if you realize mr leo the truth is that america has a policy um of course uh uh apostle and they mentioned part of it here that is to defend the interest of their citizens mm -hmm. now the truth in it is that if you look at it those who have american nationality because i had got the other day uh some of the persons ranting in yaoundé and cpdm psycho fans so to say of course, saying that they'll be deported. Now, you have what you call extradition treaty. Now, in extradition treaty, in the international uh, relations and international law, when a country where you are residing realizes that if there are evidence that sending you back to the country that is requesting extradition, you will not get a fair trial, they will prefer to, they can keep you there and prefer to get the, send you, allow your, ask your files to be sent over, and your trial, which means that in the case where it concerns this current crisis, Mr. Leo, U.S. under normal condition cannot deport especially those kind of category of persons because they understand that the aspect of fair trial and hearing 
will not be into place. This is okay, a let me take this one here. from Ochiba Nelson. Oh, you have something to add? Yes, uh, let me. I want to queue up with him because uh, you see, uh, the we have so many cases, reported cases of Nsalai law firm mm -hmm. taking known Cameroonians to court and asking on charges of terrorism. And the U.S. Uh, the courts came out clearly and told them okay. and told them that these people are not considered terrorists in America. They are freedom fighters and not terrorists. So you see the pros prospect of any person dreaming that any no, of those guys can fighters. be deported. Okay. Hello, Mr. Kuh. It's a steam as a blade. Okay. Yeah, but but but, but uh, the the U.S. wants the conflict to end. Where, yeah, but where, let's where, forget where, deportation. Wherever you stand, wherever you stand now, let's forget deportation. It's not yeah. a of question. Yeah, but wherever you stand, none of them is considered terrorists in America. Wherever you stand, uh, if you are found guilty of encouraging uh, the war, you are going to be uh, receiving uh, this, the, the casino. The yeah, yeah. Hello, Mr. Kum. I'm following your program live. Uh, this is Ochiba Nelson writing from the United States. I'm following your program live. I think the USA stated uh, they are implementing visa restrictions on those who don't want a peaceful resolution, not uh, those promoting violence. Yes, those, but those who, don't, who do not want peaceful resolution are the ones promoting the violence we are undergoing. Uh, first, identify the peaceful resolution the USA is referring to here. Remember, everyone has said uh, the national dialogue has failed and the world knows about it. The only platform for a peaceful resolution that the USA and other Swiss major talks. countries have endorsed is the Swiss talks. This is where uh, they believe both parties should meet and discuss the root causes. Uh, there are those in Yaoundé who want it, whereas uh, others don't want. Some in Yaoundé want the war to continue. Others believe it's an internal affair, whereas others say let them go for an inclusive dialogue without preconditions out of Africa. On the side of Ambazonians, those who are against Swiss talks, uh, you are, you're mentioning names, I will not read them, and have been, I don't want to get into your politics, eh? and have been holding back uh, door talks with the government. Therefore, visa restrictions shall apply to both the Yaoundé ministers and some Ambazonian leaders uh, undermining the Swiss talks. That is Ochiba. Nelson, the message is quite long. Is that not also the problem where even amongst the ranks of uh, either the government, there are persons who would want uh, to see dialogue hold, meanwhile there are others who, who are not interested in it, and in the ranks of uh, the separatists also, we have a lot of factions. Mr. Liu, um, a while ago, I'm sure you asked a question before coming to that, that mm. these people have diplomatic or international passport, but there's something that pertains when you enter a country, when you get to the airport, there's a sign in, like if you have to leave Douala Airport, you have to take your fingerprint and you sign in there in Douala Airport. And when you arrive at that nation, the immigration checks you. Yeah. Now, if you have a visa restriction, mm. they will no, deport you. They will deport you. Hey, there's ways. no way. <laughs> there are no two ways. So, whether you have international passport or you don't have international passport, you, are you, must, stop at the <laughs> you must stop at the airport to check it. <laughs> now, to your question as far as the divisibility or the division is concerned, to those who say, um, I, I stand for Swiss talk, those who say, I don't stand for Swiss talk, those who come on government who say, I stand for dialogue, so those who say, no, let's not dialogue. The U.S. made it clear that there will be actions. Action will be taken against these people. Now, the action is not only visa restriction. I hear people like you, you ask a question that people are saying that um, I, do, I will not travel to U.S. in the next five years. They should pray that U.S. should not sanction Cameroon, the state of Cameroon, as Cameroon as a state. Because if Cameroon is sanctioned as a state, all those companies that generate money from U.S. stock exchange market who are based in Cameroon will not generate those money. That's a fact. Because if you are generating money, if you have a company in Cameroon that is generating money for U.S. state, U.S. exchange uh, uh, market, you will not first. Secondly, all partners, companies that exist in Cameroon that do that generate money through ch uh, channels that are based in the United States or out of the United States, but controlled by the United States. For example, if U.S. has uh, ten, uh, companies in, 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 in England or in, in, in France that your company lays with for business and Cameroon as a state is sanctioned, just know that all those agreements that you have signed will be suspended. Yeah, but American, American investments are also in Cameroon. No, I'm, 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 I'm coming. No, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Remember that. No, let me, let me come, Mr. Liu. When they sanction you, they are not sanctioning you because they feel like they don't have investment. But the issue is the way their investment level. Mm -hmm. Who needs who more? That's the question. How much U.S. is pumping for Cameroon to fight HIV? Huge. 
How much in US is poor people come out to fight terrorism? Huge. How much US is poor people come out to elevate poverty? Huge. How much US is poor people come out to fight gender-based violence? Huge. How much okay. is come out? Okay. So, based yeah, on yeah, this... You, you're not answering my question. No, I want to no, 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 no. My question is, in the side of the government, it is very clear. We saw the Prime Minister... I was just reacting to... No, to we to, have time to, to now. Others the, have to talk. <laughs> I was just reacting to some of the... Questions. Others have to talk now. As a question, you are saying something else. Let uh, Apostle look at it. I'm saying that in the ranks, uh, in the government ranks, we have seen a move that was taken to discuss with Ayuk Tabi and, 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 and the rest. And mm -hmm. many persons actually acclaimed that move. And uh, a minister came out to say, no, we do not endorse nothing like that took place. And even in the ranks of uh, the separatists, there seems to be so much division to see that uh, on both sides that people are actually stifling any initiative that seeks to uh, bring both uh, sides to the table. Yes, that's one of the reasons I'm sure from what is written there. Mm -hmm. Any person who is not, who is promoting violence mm -hmm. in Cameroon, it should be spelled out. It means within the ranks of the government, there are individuals who do not even want any peaceful resolution. There is a camp that doesn't even want dialogue. And there is another camp in the government rank that wants dialogue. And there is a clash between these two camps within the government rank. And that is the reason why things are getting more difficult. Going to the side of the separatists, there are persons also who are initiating the peace, uh, the Swiss talks. And within them, in the cycle of the separatists, there are also persons who do not want the Swiss talks. So there is a clash amongst these two persons. Now, the U.S. is coming in, I believe, is to, how do I put it, to dissolve this uh, different faction. Yes, to clear this faction, yes, mm -hmm. to clear everything and then say, okay, since you guys don't want, this is what we are bringing right now. Because the government stands for, we want to discuss with preconditions. Mm -hmm. And the separatists say, we do not want any preconditions. That particular sector has been squashed by the U.S. by saying that it is dialogue without preconditions. Mm -hmm. In other words, we are not asking your opinion in this particular case anymore. We've given you sufficient time to manage things. You have been rigmaroling. You've been dancing. Five years running, people are dying. Schools are not going on. Individuals are mean. The economy, Some are, is, yeah, the economy is dying the down. Economy is dying down. People are refugees. Others are internally displaced. The whole system is in chaos. Northwest and Southwest is turning into something else. We have given you five consecutive years. The world has seen how our Congress wrote to you people. Your, your parliament wrote back in response to our Congress. We, the people have all seen how I've seen the road. We sent our U.S. Under Secretary of State for Africa. He came there and tried to negotiate things. Other body like Francophonie has come. The Commonwealth has come. United Nations Secretary General has come to Cameroon. Enough we enough also... Enough. Eh? Enough is enough. Yes, so we have given you enough avenues to handle this thing at the level of a family. Since you have proven to us that you are not mature enough to handle things by yourselves, we have decided to step into as a body to give you the counsel and the direction you do not want. So they are coming in right now to make sure that all this infighting among separatists, who wants this, who wants this, we will not ask what you want anymore. We are not interested in what you want. Whether government want this or the separatists want this, we are not interested. Because this your infighting for many years have been dragging the war, prolonging it, and innocent masses are dying. So we have come down to mellow down all your factions and all your thoughts. We are coming with our own right now. First thing is that... We are restricting visa to all those who are carrying out or pushing this thing. Secondly, we want a dialogue without precondition. The only opportunity they have given to people right now is that you still decide that dialogue. If you delay in organizing this dialogue as individuals or as, 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 as a community, we will come there, choose where you will organize this dialogue, and we will force you on the table to do what we want. Since you don't want to act as a mature person, we will treat you as a child. Yeah, but but uh, what should we, if if that's the official position of uh, the government saying that of, of the United States that uh, we want uh, dialogue without uh, preconditions? Uh, what should be uh, the work that has to be engaged on both sides now? Well, uh, you see, Mr. Leo, <laughs> like we had said, when the dialogue kicks off, you see everything has been prepared there. The CDN has taken care of everything. Uh, I think what the U.S. is simply doing now is just clearing the table, as uh, Apostle Nambi said. Clearing the table so that... And then giving the parties some period of grace again for them to sit on their own and see whether they can batter things out. Mm -hmm. If they cannot, aha! Then the what has been prepared for them will be put on the table. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I don't th see how there will, there will be any chance for anybody to dodge. Yeah, when we say what what has been prepared for them, what what else? genuine this dialogue, is, sir. This is, this is already this is already genuine dialogue. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is uh, with the addressing of all the issues, we have to address all the issues without, without fear of favor. Yeah. Um, uh, senior barrister, I'm yes, saying sir? that uh, this already is a sanction that has been put out there on persons who are actually. Uh, struggling to pertain. Uh, this is just yeah, this, this is just this, this, what what I'm, this is what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Uh, this is already sanctioned. Mm -hmm. If uh, another time of grace is accorded both sides to fix themselves mm -hmm. and be disposed uh, to talk, uh, we're going to see another wave of sanctions. Of course. Yeah. But I, I referred you to 684. Mm. The, if you look, you go through, you will see that those sanctions have been graduated and uh, we know that economic sanctions are coming yeah. and uh, as i was saying they should get their blanket because the days ahead are going to be colder the more resistance they put the more sanctions they are going to face that's the thing the language is clear so this one is just warming up we're not going to anywhere with this it's warming up okay if they continue resisting and they don't want to organize the peace the peace talks they will get further sanctions and like uh, tao was saying here he can even uh, include econ economic sanctions. You know, those sanctions can go in right up to medication. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Not only just your money, can even go up to medication. Uh, if international community is involved, we shall be in serious trouble. We shall be in serious uh, trouble. Uh, it says that uh, this decision reflects our commitment to advance a dialogue to peacefully resolve the Anglophone crisis and support uh, respect for human rights. What dialogue is the United States talking about? Is there a dialogue already? Or oh, they are talking that they want to advance the already held a major national dialogue? Uh, no, major national dialogue is a kangaroo one. Anybody who dreams, you only hear me very well, anybody who dreams, I mean, just by imagining that, that phony kangaroo thing that they called that national dialogue in Yaoundé was, was a dialogue, that person should be insane. Now, uh, Mr. Leo, what simply the U.S. is saying here is simple, that there is, there should be, a little way for a genuine dialogue. Of course, you know, CDN, and we have done our job already, and currently now we are talking with the, uh, with the separatist leaders, as we speak, the restoration leaders, as of now, to also ensure that they come to an understanding of uh, probably uh, another aspect which could also push them to get into dialogue when the time comes. Well, um, as that is also concerned, you realize that as a two-way factor, um, CDN is in a move, just like any other organization, because we are not saying that we are the ones who have the monopoly for all the transactions. We are saying that there are many persons who are equally in the move, ensuring that things move well for peace to return in these two regions. Now, if you look at um, what they're talking about there with the, with, the, with the U.S., the aspect of, com of uh, committing, the simple thing is that they are simply sending the message that the groundwork should be put in place. Now, Mr. Leo, the main thing here is that they have not they are not the one deciding the last of that they are still making us to understand that we still have a chance which means the the, the, the parties involved still have a chance to make a wise sunshine as far as getting a genuine dialogue that will bring to an end the current quagmire we find ourselves it therefore implies as per that statement that if at a point in time this particular time is given and no effort is done then other means will come into place that will force both parties involved in the conflict to must come to table. As, as a matter of fact, you realize that in the, in the procedures all along, all we are making people to understand is that if the U.S. is already on here, and we look at the current hearing of the U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon as we speak now, it still tells you that more. Of course, the statement has already come out. The statement has already been issued just about three, four seconds ago, now as I speak which we will still make it public to the uh, people, uh, to the viewers in a short while because we are currently following right now. And of course, as I said earlier, the CDN, we are currently on course on ground in the U.S. Yeah. to follow mm. these developments and bring them back to the people. So mm. our intention as men, as we say, is not because we have any interest in our point is that we just want to see that the parties involved get to dialogue so that when they get to dialogue, at the end of it, the killings will stop. Okay. But unfortunately, anybody who plays tough mm. will hear in okay. the days ahead. We think, Mr. Leo, when you say the U.S. places visa restrictions on violence are promoters, please, do they know the violence promoters? If yes, who are those promoting the violence? Uh, Tambe, Alex, um, <laughs> yes, can you take a decision without actually um, acknowledging or identifying those involved? Because as we speak, <laughs> the restrictions 
on? No, for him. The restrictions are on. Would you please restrictions for persons you don't know? Remember that uh, before this, there was the Agoa Act that was taken against Cameroon. So mm -hmm. U.S. has a long history about this conflict. Mm -hmm. They have the intelligence services. Mm -hmm. They have social media that they gather data to form. They have the conventional media, as we are talking here now and reporting on news stories. They have friends who are working. They have the embassies that are here. They have uh, um, missions. Uh, 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 st uh, uh, they have missions that they support, like we have other um, NGOs, international NGOs that work on the field that give them full report on a daily basis. So they have all these figures. All to apply and you see your passport sorry you are not promoting you are you are not uh, pushing for peaceful resolution and reform crisis so we are not promoting violence yeah you are promoting violence so yeah. violence are in different forms the direct violence in uh, structural violence and there's a uh, uh, cultural violence so are uh, in different forms as far as the anglophone crisis is concerned those refusing kids from going to school those promoting ghost town and saying this that those promoting chiefs who are killed when chiefs are killed are saying yes thank god they are killed they are this that that a whole lot of issues Remember that the social media is it is itself is a data conversion center. So whatever we have been posting on our individual Facebook pages, Twitter account, and the rest, they have their own way to interpret their violence. It may not be our own way. We may feel like maybe our own way of promoting violence is saying that, hey, go and kill this. No, maybe when you share a post of certain thing to them based on their criteria, because they have not defined what they consider as violent as far as limiting visa is concerned. So it's a big web. <laughs> People should be okay. very careful. It's a big word. People should be very careful. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and uh, to everyone in the house, Mr. Liu. We thank God for this statement. It uh, sounds more serious. God will favor us this time around. Esther is writing from Yaoundé. Mo also writing from Yaoundé says, Good evening, Mr. Liu, and Mo from Yaoundé. I think the USA is not serious to intervene in solving <laughs> this crisis. Uh, they have all the means to do so. But keep playing around. Um, to, <laughs> uh, to, yes, that is how Cameroonians actually consider the U.S. today. Some say um, this is they are going to be serious. Others say, but they have been making these statements uh, for so long now. Mr. Leo, there are governments that when they come in power, you understand their mode of operation. Okay. At Tony Blinken's speech during his inaugural speech as Secretary of State for the United States of America pointed these issues. He pointed Tigray, he pointed Uganda, he pointed Cameroon. And I can tell you so far, actions have been taken with the, against these three particular nations. There are restrictions of visas in Tigray, and names were mentioned in Uganda, and equally Cameroon. And that is to tell you that not every leader has the same modus operandi. Okay. Not every leader has the same model of Pirandis. A lot of people seem to not seem to understand diplomacy. Diplomacy does not operate the way you want it. It is very, very patient. It is very, very patient. So we should be very careful. When you see when the New Zealand came to solve the Bougainville crisis, Australia had manipulated things, just like what France has been doing to the Southern Cameroon case. Osira even went as far as aiding the people of Papua New Guinea to make sure they silenced the poor of Bougainville. It did not succeed. They brought confusion in the midst of the separatists in Bougainville. The separatists of Zontende later on came back to their senses, assembled themselves together, and then faced the people of Papua New Guinea. The United Nations came there and made that Bougainville as a UN trust territory. It did not still solve the problem. It was New Zealand that came from nowhere. Now, you will know that before they went for a referendum that they voted 98 percent in favor of secession i'm sure the poor Papua new guinea said earlier that they don't want to hear anything like referendum just like the government of cameroon said we don't want to hear anything like conditions or this form of state for the race we don't want to hear secession but at the end of the day it was a single nation new zealand that came on the table and dragged the two parties into a dialogue and then now they were forced to even go for a referendum something that if they had given the special status to these guys of bougainville they would not have come to the place of voting for a referendum so i'm telling us to understand that this should be the last straw that will put the cameras back 
the Cameroon government should know very well that at the level of things right now is no longer a hide and seek affair. Things are getting very serious. Know that background works have been taking place for so many years. I mean, almost two to three years now. People have been working on the ground. We belong to the coalition of the dialogue and negotiation. We know the kind of what have been going on ground. Many, many ambassadors and many, many ministers and many, many presidents of other countries have been consulted and things are going on ground. If you see you as coming with this statement, it is a statement that has a root. If you want to go and trace the root of this statement, <laughs> uh, uh, let me just begin to watch how the drama unfolds. Because <laughs> the I, I want, I want, all, I want all of us uh, to react to the end of uh, that statement. It says that uh, this decision re reflects our commitment to advance a dialogue to peacefully resolving the anglophone crisis and support respect for human rights. The United States strongly supports the Cameroonian people and we remain committed to working together to advance <laughs> democracy and mutual prosperity for both our countries, that is the United States and uh, Cameroon, supports the Cameroonian people. Um, what, 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 what reading do you make out of this last statement? Well, the statement is very clear. It, the, the United States is not supporting Cameroon government mm. because in this particular crisis, the crisis that concerns the people, the mm. Cameroonians, so uh let's say we support the cameroon people in, want people to understand that they're not taking sides they're supporting the cameroonians as a whole not taking sides with either the government or the separatists so it's called they're supporting the cameroon people or the interests of the people of cameroon that's what we make of it um mr leo you see when we have this type of complex situations coming up uh, i think it is time for us um we we said earlier that the U.S. seems to be giving a period of a period of grace for the people to do do something. Uh, on this your platform, sometime you mentioned that can you are you as can you people here not come up as mediators? I think it is time. This is the time now. They, we have a period of grace. This is time for some Cameroonians to come up of goodwill. Mm -hmm. If they are capable of acting as mediators, well, let us engaging see. both sides. Yes, mm -hmm. why not? Let us see if we can have local efforts at mediation. Let us if we can come up with a local team to mediate. You challenge me sometimes. Say, well, why? Why not you? <laughs> yes, I, I am not alone. There are other people who can, who can also do it. Well, unfortunately, I'm a member of CDN, so I cannot uh, isolate myself. Yeah, but the CDN can. What's up? Uh, if you are putting me there, then you are putting the CDN <laughs> into, the, into the race. Mm. Well, we can put the question to the CDN if he can take the challenge. But as we said, CDN had already prepared the platform. The platform is prepared, prepared. So any person who comes up with any viable negotiation uh, attempt will be supported by the CDN uh, work. Mm -hmm. they, they provide that platform which will enable the talks to go scotch free. You see, so I think um, this is time for us, communities of goodwill, both at home and abroad, to come up and see whether we can help the parties to have some form of arrangement mm. but talking of sanctions uh if um the united states were to sanction cameroon actually uh who suffers is it uh, <laughs> the state officials or is the population because you were you're yeah. talking about about um the economic sanctions and, and the like who is going to suffer it's the population no, and, it's and the united states this, the united states says mm -hmm. We strongly support the Cameroonian people and we remain committed to working together to advance democracy. Yeah, the statement is very clear. Mm -hmm. Just like um, Senior Barrister said earlier, if you hear they have not, they don't talk about we support the Cameroonian government, but the people, mm -hmm. Cameroonian people. Now, if sanctions are to go on, there's what they call targeted sanctions, mm -hmm. which means you don't make it at random, but it is carefully worked out in such a way that it goes on those who are supposed to pick up the sanctions. So in this case, for example, if you are a government official or maybe a key actor in the conflict and you don't want it to end, and probably you have relatives around you, they will obviously suffer. Then you have an investment in Europe and the things like that, or you have an account in wherever the service is coming from, which is frozen. You discover that the first thing is that you are the main person who is directly involved with feeling the pinch and the pain of the set sanction then your relatives around could equally come, but it, not that we'll talk about staggered sanction. It means that it's careful in such a way that the population does not suffer from that kind of sanction. Now, this kind of sanction is different from what we call state sanction. 
because state sanction they give in such a way that it affects the entire uh, economy and for state sanctions they simply come in a way to weaken the power of the state because you know in any government what keeps what gives you the power is financial viability the moment you are not violent you are not you are, you are not buoyant financially you discover you might have problems paying your workers you might have problems carrying out some projects which will even cause the people to revolve against you so in this case here we're not talking about state sanctions that's why that statement you are really saying something we look at it to the Cameroonian people Mm -hmm. it, I repeat, Cameroonian people, people should listen very well. The Cameroonian United people. States strongly supports strongly. the Cameroonian, the Cameroonian people. people. Cameroonian people. And we remain committed to working together to advance democracy Good. and mutual prosperity for both countries. You are talking about Cameroonian people and Good. we are working for the prosperity of the nation. But now, should we impose economic sanctions mm -hmm. on the nation? No, it would that not is go. going to undermine the prosperity. Yes. Yeah. It would obviously undermine. That's what I said. U.S. That's why I said U.S. is not as of now. Mm -hmm for what they call state sanction. Mm -hmm. If you look at that statement, that's why I said their concern is to safeguard the interests of the those, people. Those involved yeah, in those involved in it. So mm -hmm. it will be targeted. Those who are involved, I said the list is already there. The mass were getting drama here talking up and down. Mm -hmm. Everything has been carefully worked out. I mean carefully worked out. And those concerned understand that trouble is already around the corner. As I said earlier, as I said in less than forty eight hours ago, there have quite been a handful of lobbying mm -hmm. to make sure that they get things turned around in the U.S. But you know, U.S. not like a camera. Now, if you look at it, um, with extradition treaties and others, as I said, if you are not a party to it, the other procedures follow. It's not like what you find in Nigeria, where uh, you Tabe Zeko, they were ferried when Cameroon does not have official extradition treaty with Nigeria, and it went like that. But if it comes to America and democratic countries, it's a whole lot of procedures. And then it gets complex again. If those persons, again, have nationalities of their respective countries, it becomes doubly complex, such that if you want to realize, Mr. Liu, if some of these state, uh, maybe uh, separatist uh, 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 leaders are concerned, if they have to go in for, don't be surprised that they might even be tribal in the respective countries and not even though, not even see Cameroon. Okay. So, so at the end of it, justice will be in a way that even those who sing uh, songs in Yaoundé are already, they are already getting the, 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 the <laughs> they are already feeling the rhythm okay. of the dance as I speak. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and your wonderful cream of panelists. And Neo will not allow me to enjoy the program. Thumbs up, our gentlemen. I mean, I'm just praying. Way to come to pass and let peace return to this country, especially in the Anglophone regions. Uh, Daisy is writing from Kumba. Good evening, Mr. Liu Apostle Ambi, and all our fellow viewers. I'm Tiku writing from Cyprus. This is a statement by the U.S. shows that there is a big fire on the ground, and we should be expecting a full outcome in less than no time. Uh, now, thank you. Thank you, too. Um, this one says, uh, Hello, Mr. Liu. I'm John from Germany. Who voted for Ayuk Tabe? Who decides who are involved in the so-called both sides? Has the U.S. solved any problem before? Your panelists uh, should be realistic. Sanctions affect only the poor. Mr. Liu, are your panelists free from the visa sanctions? I'm sure. <laughs> Our answer, yeah. He said, I'm free. He said, he said that already, yeah. We are free. Uh, Pastor Du, uh, Derek, watching from... From Limbe, he was here uh, two no, yes, yesterday. He was here yesterday. He says, uh, "Good evening, Mr. Liu and the panelists. What if the individual names are made known today by the USA and the government decides and replace all of them and appoints <laughs> new ones? Uh, are we not back to square one?" Derek is right, uh, Pastor Derek. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's also. Uh, a smart one there from a man of God. Good evening, Mr. Liu and other panelists. Uh, <laughs> good evening, Mr. Liu and other panelists in the studio. I learned a lot from the program. Nkong Wilson Bangse writing all the way from the far north, precisely in Mokolo. Good evening to you. Hello, Mr. Liu and the panelists. Uh, this is B Branson from Finland. This is an interesting topic. You guys have to understand that the separatists are the ones who initiated the Swiss talks and were ready and were fully engaged. But the government of Cameroon did not earn. The separatists cannot foster Cameroon a government. Atamaya Jean Claude says, Good evening, Mr. Liu, and all the panelists on board. I now believe what Dr. Nick says about the crystal ball. Okay. Good evening. Mr. Liu, some of your panelists supported violence in the Anglophone regions, but maybe, maybe uh, have forgotten so fast. They can reflect. Mola Fako is writing from uh, from Limbe. <laughs> okay. Good evening, Mr. Liu, 
and all of you in the studio. I'm happy for the United States for doing that. It may be the solution to the problem. It's Desi writing from Wutu 2, uh, that's uh, in Limbe. Good evening to you. Um, Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to all the panelists. The program is very interesting. If Mr. Kedia doesn't want, okay, <laughs> Mr. Kedia is not here today. Okay, uh, Chris from Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Kum, and the wonderful panelists. Uh, Self-defense and determination are uh, not wanting peace are two different things. No Southern Cameroon is refusing. Um, okay, is refusing way of dialogue. Cameroon government on our part has already designed its way to end the war. Eventually, the government is the one hindering uh, the peace. Yes, uh, um, I don't know. We're stopping with you. Yes. Um, now, is the, the, is the United States siding with the Cameroonian government when they say we are with uh, the Cameroon people? We are going to promote democracy, advance democracy, and mutual prosperity for both countries? Mm -hmm. The U.S. Um, respect oh, conventions. Is diplomatic language? Diplomatic language, yes, and respect of the principle of territoriality. Okay. Cameroon as a state, mm. you cannot in the, you cannot directly make a judgment against a state affairs. Yes, you can influence that state, but Cameroon first of all is a state. Secondly, when they say the Cameroon, the state of Cameroon at this point in time, let's be clear. International law recognizes Cameroon as a state, and the separate not the the, the separatist uh, battle they are still fighting. So they cannot say the people of Saudi, they cannot take, they cannot take Saudi Cameroon. No, even if it's a state, but they will not openly, no, it's, it's internationally recognized. You are saying so, but they will not come and say Saudi Cameroon, is, there a mem is he a member of the Security Council? No, is he a member of the United Nations? No, Saudi Cameroon is not a member of the United Nations. States are members of the United Nations. Is he a member of the African Union? No. As in point it that is still, is it was a state, yes. No, there, 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 let me correct that. There are many states, there are many states, there are states on earth that are not part of the United Nations. It doesn't make them not being states. At this point, no, no, at this point you, in you time. You are not qualified as a state because you are part of the U.S. At this point in time, you will not, you will not ask you, the U.S. will not say, will not side with Southern Cameroon. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to correct you that you must not be a part of the United no, Nations to be a state. Let me answer this question. Let me answer this question. This question is is this cite, it's not citing with Cameroon government per se, but it's respecting the boundaries governing the, the United Nations. He is part of the United Nations and they are respecting the boundaries. But however, they are telling Cameroon government that there is a possibility where um, you could reduce this violence to save your people. And we are citing the people of Cameroon and the state itself. Remember that they talked about the separatists there. The separatists there, if, who, who do they represent? They represent their ideology that the U.S. feel like maybe it's legitimate, it's not legitimate, depending on when they go on the table and discuss. So, stating here that when I mean that they are not a state, it's not a state per se, I mean that if we go by the U.S. way, the U.S. see it, it's different from your way, opposed to, it's different from my way. You will not force, we will not force our way from the U.S. Even those who are insulting us will not force their own way to how we look at things. The U.S. see it, see Cameroon as a state banned by convention and see the Southern Cameroon as a struggle now, which is uh, within, within, within Cameroon. Cameroon. Mm -hmm. So you will not force them to say because it is a state it is banned by this, that, 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 that it's a state. No, I'm, re I'm reacting based on a U.S. ideology. So you, you are not correcting me on U.S. ideology. I'm reacting on U.S. ideology, not my ideology. Yeah, because uh, this, the statement reads um, that um, the conflict in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon. It's not me, it's the U.S. Yeah, the U.S., that's what the U.S. is saying. It's talking about the U.S., um, the, the Anglophone regions in Cameroon. But um, how does this actually, what the U.S. is saying now, how does this solve the problem? Because they want the conflict to end. You are doing uh, visa restrictions. How would that solve the problem? Okay. Like we said earlier, visa registration is just the beginning of many other things to be done. Mm. That visa registration is like calling your attention that we have given you enough space. Mm. We are introducing this restriction to let you understand that if you don't take your stand and do what we have been agitating or advocating for the past years, we are going to go. We are going to step further to put you under more serious discipline. Where you, are, you America say we are there to promote democracy. It's a very serious statement because that democracy is actually giving a people's right. One of U.S. foreign policy is to promote democracy. America may never wish 
Cameroon to separate, but democratically they may give people a right to choose. That's democracy. Give them the opportunity to make their decision. Give them the vote, the ballot box to decide. That's democracy. So if they come that they are promoting democracy, they may call the two persons in question and organize a referendum. I don't think New Zealand was interested in separating Bougainville from the people of Papua New Guinea. It was the, a policy they put in place. It was the people because democracy is actually aligned a people make their decision. Like I said earlier once on this platform, dictatorship is when the government have the people and democracy is when the people have the government. So if the U.S. is promoting democracy and it says it wants to advance democracy in Cameroon, they may come so you guys are fighting, fighting, fighting. In democracy, we don't go a log ahead. We cast lots to see decision because in democracy it is vote that decides your direction. So if they say they are calling to promote democracy in Cameroon, they may come and say, okay, according to America's foreign policy, which is to advance and promote democracy, at the level we are right now, we are dumb in between two opinions. And once we are confused, it's only the vote, the ballot box can determine. So we call on both parties now, democratically, to decide their direction. That's democracy. So that statement is very, very, very coded. It's very coded. Let, let us not just look statements from a shallow point of view. They have a lot of implications. And that's why I say democracy and uh, diplomacy is something that it has no map. It has no map because every statement has its interpretation. That simple word that America is there to advance democracy. Cameroon might not democracy be. Democracy and mutual prosperity. Mutual for, prosperity. For both, no. both countries. Both, yeah. For both, yeah, for both countries. Democracy and mutual prosperity of both countries, mm. which means the democratic system of America is federation. Mm. They can come to bring that democracy here. So let us just be very, very tactical as we hear those statements because it is the outcome of those statements that will actually interpret it. Yeah, but I just read, I just read uh, a submission. I just read a submission, uh, I'm sure, a uh, presentation from uh, the new um, uh, US ambassador, US ambassador yeah. to Cameroon who is highlighting that uh, he's taking office. He's very conscious of the fact that uh, there are lots of challenges Cameroon is faced with. Uh, the U.S. is working with Cameroon uh, in the Lake Chad Basin to fight the, the Boko Haram. <laughs> It is also um, conscious of what is happening in our backyard, that's the Central African Republic, because we are host, hosting uh, this. Um, yeah. May it not also complicate uh, what is happening here? Don't we also see that the United States somehow uh, is, way, is, is, is caught in a web because they need Cameroon to fight Boko Haram and ISIS. They need Cameroon to host uh, refugees from, uh, from fleeing yeah. Nigeria up north. And they need Cameroon. They need Cameroon to 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 guarantee security between the Douala Bangui corridor to transport regional weapons. balancing. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Liu. Yeah, the, we, are, we are talking about geopolitics here. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Liu. You see, I want to go back on what Mr. Javis was saying. Mm. Uh, when he said Southern Cameroon is not a state, uh, I by think. US oh, definition. please, no point of correction. Please, by you US don't US correct what you don't even hear. I've never said anything. You are correcting. No. Why are you correcting? <laughs> Listen to me first. No, by US you US had US your time. I'm Listen to me. That, oh, no. that is correcting me. Oh, you so don't, want me, you don't want me to talk. No, talk, sir. No, 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 then no. you listen to me instead of talking in my place. I was saying that I don't agree with him because I want to remind him that. U.S. The same thing, but oh my God! Don't agree with U.S. I was talking on U.S. Wonderful. Not me. Don't paint me. What is this now? No, you are painting me. Paint like U.S. So your yeah, problem is don't want me to talk. Is that? No, sir. Continue. But you are painting me. You don't agree with me. We I have a moderator here. Why are you playing his role? No, just let let uh, senior vice talk, please. He doesn't want me to talk. Ah. Uh -uh. <laughs> I am saying that Mr. Tama Javis is wrong to say Southern Cameroon is not a state. And I am let me remind you. U.S. I was replying. Let me remind you. Because people are watching, they will say that Javi said on the correction, I am reacting on U.S. Army. Yeah, but you've made a point. Uh, you are wrong, sir. Because United States voted in Resolution 1608 that recognized Southern Cameroon independence. Let me see how you get out of that. They voted. And they voted yes. We can go to the records. You can't tell me that a state that was recognized by the United Nations with the U.S. vote, U.S. will say that it's not a state. What, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. It is a state with international recognition. The independence was by joining the Republic of Cameroon. You can't tell me it's not a state. Even today, give me, look, go to the definition of a Cameroonian. Today, inside the definition of a Cameroonian, 
you are a Cameroonian because you either originate from Republic of Cameroon that got its independence in night on the first of January 1960, or from Southern Cameroon that had its independence on the first of uh, uh, October 1961. Here you are saying Southern Cameroon is state. By U.S. say that's it. By it now. Say, by U.S. say not. So you, you have you have it there that Southern Cameroon is a state. Please, you don't confuse international law with diplomacy. Don't confuse the two. At diplomacy, you will not want America to say that we are the ones dividing Cameroon. This man's statement here, when you get that point, advancing democracy, look, he is talking about self-determination. Yes, he is talking about self he, they are They will work. What do they say? Mutual interest. Is it? You think it's for America? Both countries. Oh, oh thank you. He is talking about Cameroon. And there are, there are two parties in Cameroon, you're talking about both countries. Read that thing well. It is not what you're saying. Ah, but, but, uh, uh, yes, I think that what you are reading there is not what this man, this man has, uh, uh, has actually written. Because when he says both, both, both uh, countries, you, will think, you are thinking that it is between Cameroon and America. I don't think so. They are saying that they are working for the interests of Cameroon, or Cameroon the, for the promotion of democracy. So is that America that is coming to vote for you? Oh, democracy, you. determination of the people working together to advance democracy Thank and you. prosperity uh, for, both, for, for both, both our countries. Who stop? Okay, who so, so you are, if they are promoting democracy in Cameroon for this crisis, <laughs> that has undertones of self determination. So please don't think that the Americans are blind, they are not, they know what they are doing. Uh, um, no. Now, since you are a member of the coalition for dialogue and negotiations. Uh, the, the premises is that uh, there are two states, Cameroon government and the state of Southern Cameroon. Is that what you're saying? I have said so before. Mm -hmm. And I will say so now and I always say so. And it is clear. I look from that communication, that communication from the beginning. It is clear. There is no doubt we are talking about two parties. Mm -hmm. The two, two parties, they talk about armed, uh, the armed separatist armed groups. That's what it is. Because there is no person who has the legal representation, the legal local standard to represent Southern Cameroon. There is nobody. But you said it's a state. Oh. <laughs> I said nobody ha has uh, been uh, elected by anybody to represent Southern Cameroon. Have I been elected? Until, look, no, start the negotiation. No, Excuse me. No, when you start the negotiation. When you say, when you say, you say there is nobody, and uh, then who is then going to be dialoguing? Okay, Mr. Liu. Yes. When you start the negotiation, you will get the person to represent Southern Cameroon. Elections will take place. That what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I told you yeah. that when you quite, start, quite, quite, quite. the platform will put in motion and you will see it. Don't go there yourself. So, what, what, Once you begin, you will see so it what, move and you will see the representation. So you are saying that uh, Sako, Ayutabe, uh, Ayabacho and the rest, they will see, uh, Kwanga will see other people represent, talk um, with the Cameroon government and not them. Is that what you are saying? Who voted them to represent them? Thank you. No, I, I don't. I don't be, be, all, of, all of us, you, you talked about the Swiss talks, you also talk about the Swiss talks, and now these are the persons who have gone to the Swiss talks. How can we now understand that? We are persons? saying that Southern Cameroonians will choose their representatives, sir. They will choose their representatives. I don't, I don't, that I don't, it may be Akwanga, it may be Sako, it may be Ashu, it may be anybody. Uh, they will choose their representatives. Um, no, no. <laughs> we really need to end the 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 the. the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very very complicated. But uh, I think that um, the United States says uh, they are working for the mutual prosperity for both countries, Cameroon and uh, Cameroon and um, and America. They said it very clearly that. Uh, they, uh, the United States strongly supports the Cameroonian people and it says that um, the United States is deeply concerned by the continued violence in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon. Uh, we continue to call for both the separatist armed groups to end the violence and engage in a dialogue without preconditions to peacefully resolve the crisis. Um, how do we get to this now? Well. If we are talking about resolving the crisis, I guess that's what you're asking yes. already. Mm -hmm. I think in resolving the crisis, we peacefully. have peacefully. We have been singing this song here uh, for the past five years, and it has been falling on deaf ears. Uh, the simple way to get out of the crisis, as we said, is just to respect the principles of conflict resolution. There are no two ways, which means that adding to what the uh, U.S. is putting in place, 
that is unconditional, that which means no di no without without preconditions, mm -hmm. it tells you that it's part of the dialogue already. So which means that the aspect of getting to the end of the conflict will obviously be one for both parties to decide on a neutral ground accepted by all of them. Two, for both parties to decide on a mediator accepted by both of them, and not one party dictating who should be a mediator. Three, if this is done, then it will be now on them, on, that's on the neutral ground, which will be accepted, because the neutral ground is very, very important, Mr. Liu. You cannot be telling me that you call a meeting in Yaoundé, and you want a separate leader to come to Yaoundé. When you are planning to catch them and lock, and you tell me that you are calling for a national dialogue, which is a, a, a farce. Now, when you put all of these things in place, you realize now that in the course of all of this now, when the mediator comes in, now, the agenda of the dialogue now will now be set in, which must be known by both parties. And as I said, in the agenda, it means that you come with the fact that you want separation, the other man will say that I don't want separation, all of those things will be accepted and put on the table. Now, in the course of all of this, you now realize that all in all, there are other things that have to be put in place, logistical movements to ensure that parties are supposed to be there, are supposed to be chosen by the two parties as far as their representatives are concerned. Now, when this is done, Mr. Liu, you realize that it will be the little way. Now, in the course of the dialogue, because dialogue is a process. Now, you cannot take a dialogue, for example, program in Ghana, I moved after one day, peace returns. No, it is a process. But the first phase of that protest, of that, of that, of that process, needs to be arrived at. That is what we're saying. That will be the first step in solving uh, this, this current crisis. So once that is done, you realize that in the course of getting in now, you have now what we call committees of reconciliation and reconstruction. That's when all those things that you already talk about reconstruction, now comes with the DDR. All what they are doing, and they are only singing the song. And to let you know, Mr. Liu, that in all what we are talking here, you only feel the peace because this is the first time the topic on the Anglophone crisis will be discussed at the Parliament. It's on subject. This June session, as I speak now, fire day for their last. Okay. They no, all go no. to sleep now to discuss okay. the issue. It's, it's, they have not seen anything yet, though. They can't get system in Yaoundé. Cameroon also uh, is our position, also very uh, key or fundamental in the way the United uh, States would want to, whatever nation would want to intervene here, given what is happening in uh, the sub-region. Remember that Cameroon is host to, um, is, is first of all is regarded as the stable nation that most of the international, uh, uh, most of the Western nations like U.S., Britain use to fight terrorism in northern Cameroon, in northern Nigeria, used also in Central African Republic, and also to monitor what's happening in Chad. And so remember, U.S. is fighting home-based terrorism in all these areas, Chad, Mali, uh, Central African Republic. So in the context where Cameroon finds itself, it's difficult for the United States to take a stand. The U.S. can only push both parties on the table to see how they can resolve it. U.S. is taking them in what we call in conflict resolution as a balcony position to take them to, to focus now of, on interest and not on position. Cameroon government is saying that I want decentralization. Separatists are saying we want feder separation. Federalists are saying we want federation. So it's taking them to the balcony position that, okay, go and talk, have this talk on the table, and you should decide your future. That we don't want to decide your future for you, but you guys must decide your future because if you don't, we will impose some of this that 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 that, that that's what they're doing and in based on this uh mr Lo, briefly i want to state here that southern cameroon can be a state but as of now in, in principle is part of cameroon that's why it's not and southwest region let's get that clear that's there's not it can be a state in in in, in principle but in fact and reality is part of cameroon so Yes, U.S. voted, but it's part of Cameroon, and it's Cameroon at this point in time. That's how we call North and Southwest region. So in that context, the U.S. is referring to is referring to the fact as it is. The reason why this nation, these parties should go on the table, first, they should look at the interests of the common man. The common government is saying they want to protect lives and properties. The separatists are saying they want to protect lives and properties. The federalists are saying federation will protect lives and properties. All of these people, you see, they have one area they agree. They want to protect life and properties. The separatists will tell you once our kids to go to school under a good condition. Common government says decentralization will give you a better way our kids will go to school. The federalists are saying the same thing. It means they agree now on the second position. We want school. The next issue is what do they, what are, where are they disagreeing? They are disagreeing now on their positions. 
Now, if they keep their positions away and look at the interest now of the person in, in Fura, the person in, in Fura, the person in Abukun Jaman, the person in, in Wova, the person in Mamu, if you look at the interest of that person, that person just wants to see that he has democracy, he has freedom of speech, he has a right to, to, okay. to select their leaders. We, we, All we, of them have one, have, one issue of, of the time. different positions. We are out of time. Uh, we already are aware of what is happening in the uh central african sub region we not only here we saw um what uh, russia did in in syria in syria when america was there and in our backyard of uh, central african republic we see what uh, russia is doing because of france um the russia china effects uh, effects uh, may we see it playing out in cameroon also should uh, america want to to to, to use a, a stronger arm in coming in to resolve this problem. Well, uh, that's diplomacy, Mr. Leo. The truth is, uh, United Nations doesn't play with two countries in the world, Cameroon and Canada, because of their linguistic background. Mm -hmm. United Nations use these two countries a lot in their diplomatic missions. And that's the reason why if I tell you the United Nations are not interested in the secession of this country, it's because of that reason. They know that the bilingual nature of these two nations influences their diplomatic activities in most countries in the world, since most countries either speak English or French. Getting people who are bilingual, they have good instruments in the hands of the United Nations. And that's the reason why, no matter how we beat ourselves to the right and to the left, the United Nations has been very, very quiet. Now, broken out of that block of United Nations, we have the G5, the Great Five. We have Russia, we have China, we have Britain, we have France, we have America. Now, if you look at it critically, the two persons who are not in collaboration with the other parties is Russia and China. China. Yeah. Now, France in this case happens to be in between the, the, the Alma and the Anvil. Mm -hmm. Why? Because France's interest in this country should not be jeopardized by America. So you discover that if China and America and, 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 and Russia are interested in keeping Cameroon and then America wants to intervene to break, France will totally take sides, which makes it three. Mm. And three, now, if they are going to go on a vote, because when things don't go among the five very well, it's vote. When they go on a vote, Britain is the person that can join America. France will definitely join these other parties together. But it will not go at the Security Council. They will not handle it as individuals. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at it, even though they are the great five, Russia is kicking against America, I'm, 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 well, France, France, right in, in Central African Republic. Republic yeah. Now, France, in technical sense, has lost Central African Republic and lost Syria. Mm -hmm. And America. Because America was also there in, in Syria. Syria yeah. yeah, they have lost Syria. Mm -hmm. Now, America is, uh, uh, France is gradually losing Mali. The truth is, we don't know yet which country is behind Mali's consistent and re persistent resistance. Yeah. Today, forces were denied entry into Bamako by the Malian population. Mm -hmm. Malian population denied France, uh, France's uh, military from entering into Bamako today. They block the roads everywhere. They don't want France in their country. Two coup d'etats occur under the influence of Sini Goita, who happens to be the interim opposition president right now. If Russia creeps into Mali, you will discover that France is gradually, the empire of France is it's gradually crumbling. collapsing and crumbling in Africa. Now, if at all Russia develops interest in Cameroon, then we are in for a third world war. Because America's approach from all indications, if we can read the clock, is gearing towards secession. Meanwhile, if Russia comes in, Russia might not go in for secession. There will Russia be a China. clash, mm -hmm. Russia and China. Because, because why? China has huge interest in this country. And China's interest is not limited to one region of the country. China is spread like a locust in this country. And definitely you and I know China's position as far as the crisis has been. That's the diplomacy we are talking right now. So I think what the U.S. is doing, but the U.S., the U.S., I know, has a certain level of influence that they can, they can, they can shut down China and Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, definitely we have to end at this uh, juncture. It's time uh, we say thank you to you, Senior Barista, except you had something to add. Thank you, Mr. Liu, for inviting me today. I just want to say that the American interests in Cameroon are bigger than, we are, than, than meet the eye than meet the eye because um, let's remember that they have 
Cam the Cameroon harbors the biggest U.S. embassy in Africa. Uh, it's not for nothing. Or in addition to all the missions that Mr. Tamai cited, mm -hmm. there is the U.S. mission guarding the Gulf of Guinea. Oh, yeah. The military mission guarding the Gulf of Guinea. Africa, man. Uh -huh. So uh, there is that one. And then let's not forget that they have always been eyeing the uh, that Gulf of Guinea to install a container terminal. So uh, business is their, is their food. So, well, they might not be siding with one side, but uh, I don't think that they want to stay out. And then you see, Americans, they have so many tentacles in Cameroon. Eh? <laughs> they have so many tentacles. Uh, I, they used to have some. Well, anyway, those are not things to be said on air. <laughs> okay, but but they are mil militarily well, they very present. Mm. They are militarily very present, and um, we should not fool ourselves. Eh? It's not because they are not vocal, but they are very present here. You have the, the USAID, you have the Peace Corps, you have. In fact, no, but, they are but, present. But, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, the US uh, would want to engage in a physical presence in, in Cameroon. Uh, we have uh, severally talked about um, international involvement in Africa, and we know the outcome. Uh, let us hope that uh, the persons to whom this statement is addressed uh, sit up. Let and them then. come. Well, wake up. Let them wake up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes. Uh, thank uh, you very much. And as the Kangaroo Parliament puts this agenda on their table, there is nothing the U.S. is a fool because circumstances have forced them. So the circumstance forced them to go in for the COVID uh, investigation and all the like. So this time around, it's not going to be business as usual. Mm. Greetings to uh, Mamiya Tanga, uh, Elizabeth, who is watching us from Boya, Azingwa uh, in uh, Pendamboko, and the Deco Mondial uh, for the Mondial Express in Kumba. They are all uh, good fans who are watching us live as we speak. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, too, for you. Uh, Tamai Javis for coming. Uh, thank you. Good evening to the... Uh, Minister of Public Work, good evening to the people of Baba Juhut, good evening Yaoundi, good evening Munya. <laughs> Apostle Ambe, thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Liu, thank you, Cameroonians. We are happy to be here. God bless you all, in Jesus' name. We want to thank you all who took time off to watch uh, the program this evening. Um, it was a pleasure presenting uh, this uh, program, and to the production team, we say uh, thank you. Tomorrow we are going to be asking the question what is uh, stalling the effective takeoff of the Limbe Deep Seaport since last year that uh, the President of the Republic actually announced that the project was going to something serious was going to take place uh, one year after nothing is happening out there in Limbe. Uh, snail peace movement, so what is wrong out there? We also are going to be looking at uh, the passport issues uh, moving from 75,000 francs CFA to 110,000 francs as from the 1st of July 2021. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.